Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Peace Love Hormones podcast. It is me, Maddie Miles, your humble host and guide on this hormone health journey. Today, we are going to be talking about ovulation pain and ovulation spotting. These are two commonly asked questions, especially as of lately. I feel like I've been increasingly getting been getting more and more questions about what to do when this happens, is it normal, etc. So we are going to dedicate today's episode to talking about this. Before we get into it, I want to number one, do a nice deep breath together and give some peace love hormones updates. So if you're listening to this on the go right now. Um, obviously, if you need your eyes open, keep your eyes open. But if you're sitting or if you're in a place in a, in a situation where you can close your eyes, let's close our eyes together. Mm, let's feel our sits bones on the seat or on the ground if we're seated, if we're laying down. Feel our body making contact with the surface that we're laying on. If we're standing, feeling our feet making contact with the ground. Mm, all right, let's take a big deep breath in together. And in your head, count to four. Hold at the top for two counts and exhale till eight. Mm-mm. I used to start off my podcast episodes doing a deep breath at the beginning, and I don't know where along the way I stopped doing that, but I really want to get back into that because it is so nice. It's so needed, especially for those of us who, again, are perhaps listening to this on the go, or maybe you're listening to this at the end of the work day or at the end of the day, whatever you're doing today, and we just need a nice deep breath, grounding, centering breath together. I know I need it because I feel like I tend to run around with, you know, a bunch of things going on and I have a lot of energy, honestly, no matter what point of my cycle I'm in. I feel like I have a really good amount of energy, perhaps more more than um, the average person, so I always could use that deep breath. I'm about to be on my period, actually, that I'm recording this, and funny story, I tried recording this yesterday. This is actually my third time recording this podcast episode, so yesterday, it was around 5.30 p.m., so way too late to be to be recording a podcast slash YouTube video because your energy is much lower at that time of the day. So anyway, I'm sitting right here. I'm recording it. I got about 12 minutes in and then I was like, you know what? We're going to restart this. No biggie. We're only 12 minutes in. The second take, I got about 36 minutes in and then literally just got up and was like, I'm done. (laughs) Turned off my camera, turned off my recorder turned off all the lights in my office, went upstairs and started cooking dinner and needed to relax. So I am now doing this at 11.30 in the morning, feeling much more refreshed and slept really, really well last night. So take three, third time is the charm. (laughs) Um, In terms of peace love hormones updates, I'm like, hmm, is there anything new that I need to give? A lot of y'all have been asking when my new cramp support formula will be releasing. So I created that formula spring of 2023. So we have the formula. It's all ready to go. It's powerful. I also use it here and there if I get cramps, um, just because I have, I have like the unlabeled form tincture form here from having created it myself and i'm really excited for it to come out i am intending and very hopeful that we will release the formula end of spring early summer we'll see i'll keep y'all updated of course as always it's really really tough to release a new product not only like does it cost obviously me financially to bring out a new product but just like all of the back end work and the operational work and fulfillment and the website and email and text flows, like everything has to shift either a small amount, medium amount, or big amount when a new product is released. So, and nonetheless, I'm really, really excited for that time. And the formula is potent and medicinal and all natural and way better than any OTC or um, other alternative that has a bunch of chemicals and nasty stuff in it. So I really want to get this out there. I'm listening to you all. It will be there 
out there <laughs> um, soon enough. But thank you for being patient with me and understanding that it takes a lot to create something to take it from idea to physical product to them actually having it within all of the systems of an e-commerce business. So we're getting there, I promise. Before we get into today's topic, I would like to read a Soothe review. I love to read Soothe reviews because, well, I just love to read them. It's really beautiful and empowering and exciting to read women's genuine experiences with taking my medicines, which is amazing. And it's weird to say my medicines, right? Because I don't own these herbs. Herbs come from Mother Nature. They're here. We live synergistically with them. But it is really, really beautiful to read these experiences that women have while taking the formulations that I've birthed and created into this world. So I love to read them myself. I usually get teary-eyed when I read them. And I love to read them for other women. That's why they're displayed on our website because it can be very, very helpful to connect with women and to hear their experiences with various things. And um, of course, taking everything with a grain of potassium because we are all unique individuals. But nonetheless, it's really beautiful and powerful to connect with women and to learn what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. So Miranda is the most recent Soothe review on our website and she wrote, Soothe, I've been a longtime listener of the Peace Love Hormones podcast. That's what we're on right now. So I was very familiar with Maddie and her work. I got off hormonal birth control three years ago and will have fluctuations and imbalances. After a particularly bad stint of hormonal acne and mood swings in November, I pulled the trigger and ordered Soothe. I just received my second bottle and my skin has cleared up so much. Yay. My mood is balanced and I have recommended Soothe to many of my friends and family members. Thank you for creating a solution to these imbalances. And then she wrote, it is also important to note that diet, lifestyle, stress levels, water intake, and more also contributed to these imbalances. My journey has included lifestyle alterations, but this tincture has definitely helped. Yes, Miranda, you're so right. It's a holistic approach, hence why I have this podcast and my social media platforms to educate about all of the things when it comes to our overall mental, spiritual, physical well-being. But thank you so much for writing this review. I'm so happy for you. And thank you so much for sp spreading the good word to your friends and family as well. I do want to throw this out there. I've already talked about this before, but I just want to say it again nonetheless, that if you want to become an affiliate for Peace Love Hormones, you can do so by scrolling down to the bottom of the Peace Love Hormones website, clicking on affiliates, and you can become one. You can enter into our affiliate, uh, referral i just mixed the two words together affiliate and referral you can become a member of our referral program and you'll be able to share the love and get some love back by giving people 10 percent off their order and then you'll get ten dollars for every order that uses your code so it's a beautiful way to organically naturally authentically spread the love if you love peace love hormones and the tinctures so thank you again miranda and thank you to everyone who's ever written a review i love them i read them they're beautiful and you're amazing so thank you so so much for spreading the love and the health and the positivity okay so today i want to talk about ovulation spotting and ovulation pain also known as middle schmerz so these are two things that um like pms like you know other struggles that women can experience during their cycles may be common but they're not normal so common and normal do not mean the same thing something can be common and that it happens to a handful or many many women but not normal in the way that uh it's not something that we have to live with it's not something that we have to endure we can actually make changes to our uh, does our, our lifestyle as a whole, nutrition, sleep, stress reduction, etc., herbal medicine, functional supplementation, to really help heal and rebalance whatever the root cause, the root imbalance that is occurring that's making these symptoms happen. So how the layout for today's episode is going to be is we're going to talk about, number one, why ovulation is important. We're going to talk about why ovulation pain occurs, why ovulation spotting occurs, what to do in the moment, especially more so for the pain if you're experiencing any pain or cramping, what to do in the moment to support that, and then what to do just in general in your life to prevent the ovulation pain and the ovulation spotting from occurring. Also, I must say, I, I've been getting a lot of messages 
which is was the catalyst for creating this episode in this youtube video i've been getting a lot of messages lately from women experiencing this so i'm recording this now january 30th and i must say that usually the holiday seasons come with a lot of hormone and cycle irregularities for women now again this does not have to be a given right like we can still have very healthy balanced hormones and cycles even during the holidays but i just must say that this does happen a lot because of the stress that comes with the holidays and the travel and being with friends and family and different climates and it getting colder and darker outside because it's also the winter again not for everyone if you live on a beach somewhere then that doesn't really apply to you but generally speaking this is the time of the year that we see the most women come in to the office or, or even if you don't have a practice right but you're just talking to women health practitioner or not health professional or not you hear a lot of women talking about their very valid real concerns and experiences about their hormones being a little out of wonk their cycles being irregular and then feeling symptoms around ovulation or premenstrually in the luteal phase also known as pms so i just wanted to throw that out there if you're experiencing this you're not alone and um also there are plenty of ways to support yourself to prevent this from happening and if it does happen every once in a blue moon usually not a cause for concern and most of the time we can kind of go back over the last like four weeks anywhere from like four to twelve weeks of our life and really go inward and just question like what has happened uh in my life that could be causing this is it stress from traveling did i move did i go through a bad breakup with a romantic partner or perhaps even with a friend am i working through childhood trauma or any sort of trauma like what is going on in my life that could be causing any sort of hormone irregularities and in cycle irregularities because at the end of the day our menstrual ovulatory cycles are very very powerful however they're also very delicate especially delicate to our internal environment and to our external environment and we all know especially if you've been following me for a while and listening to my podcast youtube and just following me on social media that our external environment also has a direct impact on our internal environment right so our hormones and our organs and our systems and processes of the bodies our cells so that being said, that any sort of stress going on in your life definitely has an impact on your overall ecosystem, including your hormones and your cycles. So it's always worth noting, okay, has anything happened in the last one, two, three months that could be causing these issues that I'm experiencing now? It's good to just notice and to, to be in tune with yourself in that way. But we'll get to some other causes um, in a moment here. Ovulation, I like to refer to ovulation as the big bang of the cycle. And I'm definitely not the only person in the health and wellness space that refers to ovulation in that way ovulation is so important you can still bleed and have a period without having ovulated we see this very commonly with women who are on hormonal contraceptives that are primarily working by preventing pregnancy by shutting down ovulation but they still may be having a withdrawal bleed so Really, ovulation, it, it's the most important part of the cycle. And it's hard for me to say that because every single part and phase of the cycle is very, very important. And we are changing on a physiological level all throughout the cycle. So to say like one phase or one time is more important than the other doesn't totally resonate with me. But I will say that if I had to choose one, like absolutely had to choose one, it would definitely be ovulation. So ovulation is this beautiful cosmic catalyst for the production of our hormones it really sets the stage for our entire cycle because in the follicular phase our estrogen and our follicle stimulating hormone are all increasing and ramping up to create you know the follicles which contain our ovum our eggs and to make all of that very healthy and strong again this is a pretty basic overview if you want a more in-depth more scientific overview or in-depth view of how our hormones and physiology and psychology are all changing throughout our cycle i have a podcast episode on this at least one actually a few i do have an entire podcast episode dedicated to the powers of ovulation as well so i'm just going to give a brief overview but in the first half of the cycle our hormones certain hormones are increasing and working to prepare for ovulation and then after ovulation we create a temporary gland where we're actually the corpus luteum where we're actually 
producing then progesterone from that gland and with progesterone comes so many health benefits and that phase of the cycle is really preparing for pregnancy and if you're not pregnant because you don't want that and that all of the things that need to happen in order to fertilize an egg and and have conception didn't take place then we have our period and the cycle starts over again so our cycles are life-giving even if you don't want to have a baby it's life-giving and energy producing for us and it really is this beautiful cycle um, also known as the infradian rhythm it's an internal biological rhythm cycle that governs and changes our metabolic function our neurology our um, gosh just so much you know like our zest for life our creativity our ability to socialize with people our ability to reflect and go inwards and have this heightened sense of intuition that happens around men- the menstrual phase so the cycle as a whole is so beautiful and powerful and ovulation is incredible powerful and ovulation happens so that reproduction can happen if that's wanted right not everyone wants that right now um and that's totally okay i'm not a mom i want to be eventually but i don't right now but that being said that is the primary uh function of it is to reproduce but again it's what gives women and females this life right in this energy because it helps with the production of our hormones it is the production of our hormones so um that being said ovulation happens so during ovulation uh one of the follicles the the dominant follicle you know i talked about before during the follicular phase all these follicles are growing and stimulating thanks to fsh fsh lowers lh increases to be able to give that signal for one of the the dominant follicle to rupture release that egg gets swept up travels down the fallopian tube and into the uterus to wait for sperm to potentially fertilize it again if that is the goal and in the intention by both parties um and so ovulation like the rupture of the follicle and traveling through the fallopian tube average takes about 15 minutes the egg stays alive for 12 to 24 hours and then sperm can actually stay alive in the reproductive track um, if you have unprotected sex uh, for about five or so days before that so we're really looking at a time of being fertile uh, per cycle of about six days or so um so it's really not a long time which is why i love educating on cycle tracking your basal body temperature cervical mucus cervical position etc because it really does help us to um number one just understand where we're at in our cycle and it can help us conceive if that's what we want to do or stay away from that if that's not what we want at this time in our life So that's ovulation. It's incredibly important. It's more of a transition, honestly, than a phase, and it's wildly, wildly powerful. So ovulation pain, it's different for every woman. So for some women, it may feel like a little pinch. For some women, it's it's like a really extreme cramp. Some women, it's like this dull pain and cramping all throughout the day. So bio-individuality, right? Everyone is incredibly different. But ovulation pain is also known as middle schmerz, and it really arises from the physiological changes that accompany the release of an egg from the ovary. So it's like what I was just talking about, right? Like the rupture of the follicle, that can actually produce some discomfort and even pain for a lot of women. You know, a little perspective shift here. It's pretty cool that we can feel, not all of us can, but some of us can really feel when that process is happening, like the rupture of the follicle to release the egg i mean that is just magical in my opinion so obviously we don't want to be in pain right and we will address that and what to do later on in the episode but i just want to give some idea of like as to where that pain is potentially coming from it's from the actual release of the egg from from the ovary right why this may cause pain and why it causes different levels of pain for different people is that that rupture and the traveling of the egg can cause some irritation of the peritoneum. The peritoneum is the membrane lining of the abdominal cavity. So also, side note, we're going to get into this next with the spotting, but this also, like the same exact process, can release a little bit of fluid, aka it can release a little bit of blood. Also, our hormones are just incredibly high during this phase. Um, Not progesterone, but estrogen, testosterone, because yes, as women, we do produce testosterone, not nearly as much as men do, but we do produce a little bit, and it's around ovulation. Um, So we have estrogen rising, testosterone, we had follicle-stimulating hormone rising, until then it switches with luteinizing hormone and then 
FSH goes down and LH, luteinizing hormone, starts to increase. So a lot of hormones are increasing, decreasing, increasing again, and, and going on throughout our entire cycle, but especially around ovulation. So I always go back to the liver and to the gut because we need to address inflammation within the body and we need to address how your hormones are being produced and utilized, metabolized, and detoxified and excreted from the body. All of these are very, very important to address and again we'll get into that later but that's some idea of why the ovulation pain may be occurring it's from the actual physiological process of your follicle rupturing and releasing that egg now we already said this that sometimes that process also causes some mild spotting it's usually like light pink blood and it could also be darker brown blood so again everyone's very different it could also be different like maybe one time you have ovulation spotting and it's light pink and then like a year later or six months later you have it again and it's brown so it's different, right? Our bodies are forever changing. We're not these robots. We are very much alive and forever adapting and getting different signals and cues from our internal and external environment that, you know, really kind of run the show and dictate the symptoms that we receive. So aside from the actual like rupture causing some fluid discharge, including blood, which I just want to state for our period and for spotting, both of those bloods aren't pure blood. It's actually a, a a big mix of other fluids and and like water and mucus as well so it's not always straight up blood just a little tidbit to notice um but also why spotting can occur is because we have like i said all of these hormones that are increasing and the dramatic increase and decrease of hormones especially post ovulation because a lot of women are actually experiencing this spotting right after ovulation has occurred and we know that af after ovulation occurs these high levels of estrogen and testosterone really plummet and, and decrease especially testosterone and luteinizing hormone so we have like a lot of these hormones that that decrease right like follicle stimulating hormone decreasing right before ovulation then right after ovulation estrogen testosterone LH are all decreasing and and then progesterone, you know, will start to kick kickstart the production. But these hormone changes in and of itself, the dramatic increases and decreases can cause this spotting to occur as well. So what do we do to support that? Again, we're about to get into that, but definitely liver and gut support because we those are the two main organs for um, you know, making sure that we have very healthy inflammation levels, healthy detoxification and elimination, how we're actually like utilizing and packaging up our hormones. Now this is a discussion for another time as well, but also talking about ATP production and cellular health is very important too um, so that's something that I always include and even if it's just a little bit like just to mention it to mention it um, I like to include like liver health yes gut health yes of course brain cognitive neuro health is super super important um, thyroid health I mean all of these things are important but what run these organs that operate these systems are cells and how do we take care of the cells so that they can receive this information properly and they can execute these functions properly well it's all about the mitochondria so mitochondria health we'll get into how we can do that but it's definitely a holistic approach via nutrition stress reduction sleep um, you can add some infrared sauna in there as well herbal medicine etc i always ask women to do a little bit more dig work on like if they are presenting some symptoms to really get clear at where they're at in their cycle because for example maybe the spotting is happening midway through the luteal phase and it's not actually during ovulation or right after ovulation so it's super helpful for me or any practitioner that you're working with to really get a full picture and deep insight as to where you were at in your cycle when these symptoms occurred and if you want to start tracking your cycle the best way to do it um not just in my opinion but we just literally see from the statistics and the research is the symptothermal method which is a branch of fertility awareness and that will help you to track and confirm ovulation and just overall get a better picture of where you're at in your cycle so that you can relate symptoms to the parts of your cycle so we know okay well you're midway through the luteal phase so that's actually normal and let's check your progesterone levels or progesterone levels too high or too low and how is your estrogen in the first half of the cycle but also like i don't mean to say all of that to stress you all out and to like kind of throw a bunch more 
more stuff on you and say like you have to run tests um i do love functional labs but i don't think that they're always necessary and especially if there is a financial constraint um there are definitely a lot of things that i would do first to see if we can just correct the issue because our hormones and our cycles and our bodies and our minds respond really well to nutrition to more sleep to cutting out the stuff that impairs our body's functioning such as like alcohol and excessive caffeine and stress um yeah managing stress and herbal medicine and other sort of like lymphatic drainage such as like sauna um which also infrared sauna helps your cellular health as well there are just so many things that is what i'm trying to say before we have to test right um but if you want to test then myself or plenty of other practitioners are more than happy to run those tests with you and to help you interpret them so if you're feeling that discomfort and that cramping in the moment i have found that heat therapy really works so if you want to get any sort of heating technology it could be an infrared light it could be a hot water bottle um, be careful because number one preferably don't use plastic so use glass i'll even sometimes just like make a cup of warm tea and just place it on my stomach cramp or not like it just feels good to have warmth in our womb uterus uh area region so in and gut too like all in that area it feels nice to have warmth and not cold so it could be a warm bath it could be um dipping a cotton washcloth or towel into hot water letting it cool slightly so it's not boiling hot and then putting it onto your stomach it just helps to relax the muscles improve blood flow and reduce discomfort also some herbal pain relievers that i love um our cramp bark is really really great if you are experiencing a cramp and discomfort to take some cramp bark uh, you could take that in tincture form is my preferred method always tinctures bupleurum i love too very very powerful for the liver and whenever we're experiencing cramping we really like to support the liver and the gut and then soothe so soothe my herbal tincture will support in preventing these cramps from happening but also if they're happening in the moment um, can be a tremendous help i cannot wait for my cramp specific tincture to come out because that is what you could also grab um, but really just focusing on reducing inflammation in the moment you could also take some curcumin uh, capsules as well some magnesium supplementation like a really good magnesium complex because there are many different forms of magnesium um, and many different ma- forms of magnesium for different sort of functions like magnesium is involved in over like 300 functions of the body but magnesium supplementation would be really great some relaxant teas honestly like just anything that promotes relaxation will be super helpful so could be a bath an herbal bath epsom salt bath deep breath techniques um which is actually my next one as well as doing some deep breath practices drinking some chamomile or lavender tea my sleepy tincture does support the nervous system as well as sleep so really supporting and getting into that parasympathetic nervous system that rest that digest to relax your muscles and not be in this like hyper tension hyper um vigilant state breath work like i just said meditation it could be yoga light stretching anything to really kind of just relax your body and the gentle exercise too whether it be from that yoga or that stretching or even a light walk can really help to get things moving and get blood circulating and alleviate discomfort um, i also wanted to mention hydration making sure that you're properly hydrated because dehydration can make all those symptoms worse so drinking water to alleviate any sort of discomfort bloating cramping that may be happening happening wearing comfortable clothing i know it seems simple but it really does work and this goes for any sort of like in your abdominal region discomfort getting into comfortable clothes taking off the really tight clothing that's like compressing your organs and it's preventing that circulation as much as we can reduce the pressure on our abdominal area the better that will feel for sure okay next let's get into some nutritional choices so while eating anti-inflammatory healthy wholesome nutrient-dense food are always important it's especially important when you're experiencing any sort of cramping or discomfort whether it be from ovulation post ovulation premenstrually or menstrually to really really support yourself via nutrition so instead of grabbing what you may be craving which may be like something super super salty or highly processed or fried greasy foods and refined carbohydrates instead choosing the wholesome versions of those so choosing the complex carbohydrates delicious roasted root vegetables such as sweet potatoes and beets will be much more helpful than eating like a fried grilled cheese but also like 
balance you know i'm definitely not one for a lot of like restriction and rules and extreme dieting i definitely just live by the principles well for myself and for anyone and everyone who works with me through my private practice to choose the wholesome options that are going to support your body on a deep cellular level so that you don't feel whatever symptom you are currently experiencing so avoiding the very inflammatory foods such as the processed uh, seed oils such as canola oil and vegetable oil and choosing healthier oils such as olive oil that's organic and an extra virgin avocados nuts seeds omega-3 fatty acids my favorite sources are wild-caught salmon and wild-caught smash fish which is an acronym for salmon mackerel anchovies sardines and herring and uh, definitely flax seeds are amazing as well for our overall hormone balance and also to prevent that cramping or help alleviate some of it because they're very high in healthy omega-3 fatty acids. And then in terms of salt, I did not mean to imply that salt is bad, just definitely opt for sea salt, which contains 80 plus minerals that are very um, essential and healthy for the body and the mind, and avoiding the processed table salt, which messes up our sodium potassium balance and can actually either cause or worsen any type of bloating, water retention, swelling, breast tenderness, etc. that you may be experiencing. Food can truly be our medicine or it can make us sick. So I always like to aim for the medicine side. And every once in a while, sometimes you're traveling around in Europe and you want a delicious pastry and go for it if you can. Again, bio-individuality. Some people can't even just have that, that one pastry because they're celiac or have autoimmune and it flares up when they eat gluten or dairy, etc. So bio-individuality always. I will always be talking about that, preaching it, etc. Because I think there are so many people out there in fact, I know there are so many people out there in the health space who think they have to take this very polarizing, extreme side and stance on things, and I'm just not like that. I have a history of anorexia and a lot of health issues from a very, very young age, and I'm so happy to be on the other side, and my health struggles got me into this space, but I'm definitely, given my my history, I'm not one to take extreme sides or anything like that. I am just all about information, education, empowering everyone to make the best decisions for themselves. And then lastly, I want to talk about some topical solutions. So if you are experiencing any sort of cramping aside from like that heat that you could put on to help alleviate some of that i really recommend castor oil packs so i love castor oil packs there are pelvic packs you can put it around that region in your womb and your uterus you can put it over your liver to help with liver detoxification you can put one over your thyroid to help with your thyroid you can actually put them on your breast as well if you're experiencing breast tenderness to rub some castor oil on your breast and then wrap the pack around it you don't even need to buy one of the organic cotton packs from from anywhere from any website you could also just use like an organic cotton flannel or organic cotton t-shirt that you don't mind getting stained with castor oil because that will happen um, I also love to put castor oil on before I go into the sauna. Now, be careful because again, especially if it's not your sauna, you don't want to get that everywhere, but to rub a little bit of castor oil over your liver, at the very least to do the liver, even if you're really focusing on, let's say your breast or your thyroid or your pelvis and your womb and your uterus, to always also have one over your liver to support with the detoxification of whatever is going to be moved in those other areas and organs of the body but i love also a ginger compress if you're feeling that cramp it's super super easy to make ginger is very very anti-inflammatory hence why it's in two of my three tincture formulas very anti-inflammatory, amazing for the body. The more we can reduce inflammation, the more healthier we will be as human beings in general across the board. So you can just simply infuse some grated ginger and then put it into hot water and then apply a cloth or soak a cloth in that and then put it on you. That's one way. A lot of people also just mash up ginger. will put it directly over wherever they're experiencing the pain or the cramp and then they'll wrap something warm around it. It's not absolutely necessary to wrap something warm around you but it's just better because it helps to open up those those pores those follicles and to really get the medicine in there so um i recommend doing something warm but calendula cream as well um which you could buy online from a reputable herbal brand or if you have a local herb shop to go into there and ask for some calendula cream it's also anti-inflammatory 
a green tea compress you could do as well as it's anti-inflammatory and has very soothing effect on breast tenderness cramps etc um, but really i find that what is super super powerful if you're experiencing a cramp again ovulation cramp or cramp and pain outside of ovulation to do the heat um, i love getting into a warm bath or into a warm shower if i don't really have the time the space the energy for a bath then i'll just get in a warm shower or put a little warm compress over myself i love of using the castor oil so that was number two uh plenty of hydration and healthy foods of course magnesium complex herbs as well to help such as the cramp bark and my overall just all of the herbs and my herbal cramp support but again soothe will help to prevent this from happening in the first place and can also be tremendously supportive for many women while they're actually experiencing the cramps and at the very least sleepy but sleepy can make you a little bit sleepy so preferably you take that towards the end of the day it does not have a sedative effect on everyone so i do have a bunch of people that I know, for example, one of my friends is a naturopath doctor. She loves taking sleepy whenever she feels stressed, even if that's at 10 in the morning because it doesn't make her um, actually like sleepy. It just makes her calm and relaxed. And I have one final thing to say on that note of if you're feeling any pain, discomfort, cramping, etc., to please just take a step back from whatever you're doing and try to the best of your ability to rest. I know it's very hard to do that in today's world where everything is so fast paced and it's like go, 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 go all the time. But if you're feeling discomfort, let your body know that you are going to take care of it on a deep, deep level by actually taking a step back from whatever you're doing and getting in some rest. This will also help to build some more trust between you, your body, your hormones, and your cycle, letting your systems know that when it does need support, you will be there to give it that support. Okay, now let's get into how to prevent this all from happening to begin with, right? Because ideally, if this doesn't happen, again, every once in a blue moon, pretty normal. It's okay if this happens every once in a blue moon because stuff happens. Life happens and travel happens and stress and moving and all these things happen that have an impact on our cycle. But we can take a proactive approach to minimize ovulation-related discomfort and Everything that we're going to talk about is just going to optimize your health in every single way. So it'll prevent all sorts of discomfort and symptoms, ideally. Number one, hydration. So we talked about this before, but most of us are not drinking quality water. So I am a big advocate for drinking spring water. If you can buy spring water from a local source and or buying it in glass bottles, like Mountain Valley Water is one of my favorite brands to get that spring water from. I cannot recommend that enough. You can also opt for reverse osmosis. You do not need to even invest in the super expensive reverse osmosis machine. You can just buy glass water jugs and go fill it up at Whole Foods or another health foods store that has a reverse osmosis filtration system and then i just recommend adding some minerals back into it because reverse osmosis is pretty depleted of the minerals through all the filtration that it goes through some other options are you could get a, an entire home system filtration system radiant life has a great one that's for the entire home they also have one that is called the direct connect plus and you can directly connect that to your kitchen sink none of this is sponsored by the way these are just things that i actually do use in my life or have used so another option which is something that i have used in the past i don't currently use it it is in our garage in case we do ever need to use it one day but a berkey water filter again it's not the absolute best filter and i highly recommend adding some minerals and structure back into the water so first things first i think uh, spring water is the best but if you can't getting a really high quality filter Berkey water filter, one from Radiant Life, that's either for a specific sink or it's for the entire home or actually going to the store filling up water jugs with reverse osmosis and then adding minerals back into all of those options except for the spring water you don't need to add minerals back into it it has a very high mineral content so hydration is very important and quality hydration just like with the foods that we eat so nutrition is very important and it's very important to understand and to recognize that one specific food could be a hundred percent natural in its pure form such as a fruit or a vegetable or maybe it's 
it's dairy or whatever it is. It may be in theory a natural and healthy food, but perhaps it's not healthy for you. And this is where bioindividuality really is important because everyone has very different systems. We have different genes. We have different things going on in our life. We have different health struggles and triumphs. And not every single food, even if it is 100% natural, it may not work for us. So that is where I think that social media can get a little tricky sometimes and uh, a lot of practitioners and health experts and influencers can really get into murky waters because nutrition as a topic is a very broad complex topic and i talk about nutrition a lot on my podcast now on youtube as well and on social media and i fully acknowledge that every single time i even talk about nutrition that i'm talking about it from a very generalized brief overview place so there are always nuances to everything again someone may do really really well with raw dairy this is like a prominent example that i see i i see people in my private practice and outside of my private practice that seem to do great with dairy especially raw dairy because it contains all of the enzymes to support digestion and more vitamins and minerals not every state allows the consumption the selling of raw dairy to be legal so that's a different conversation for a different time but some states like the states that i live in do allow that and so that works for some people and it really helps to boost and optimize their health same thing with gluten some people can tolerate it let's say like they go over to europe this is the common story i went over to europe and i was eating croissants and and pastries and all these things and i didn't feel terrible um everyone is so different you know someone who has celiacs or some sort of autoimmune it may be worsened the symptoms in the state of the autoimmune issue from something like dairy even if if it's raw from your local organic regenerative farmer or gluten again not to demonize either of those two foods but just to more so provide that insight and that reminder more so that everyone is very different so every bit of advice that i give about nutrition in this episode and outside of this episode take it with a grain of potassium and take what works for you pretty much like the best nutritional guidelines that i can give are to just eat real food so i'm not talking about the food that comes packaged in a plastic bag and in a box in the grocery store those can sometimes make their way into um into our diet right because i'm even thinking of like beans right like even if you're buying beans in bulk you're still putting it into a little bag um but maybe you're also buying beans in a can form or you're buying your rice and your oats and your legumes in in package form so i'm not saying don't eat those i'm more so referring to like the oreos and the chips and the artificial things right like that's the word i was looking for the artificial foods those don't really need a place in our life and if they do genuinely provide joy for you um then i would say just have it but sparingly right like don't look at it as like oh this is food look at it as like oh this is something that i enjoy it's a sweet that i have every once in a while but i'm not eating this food to boost my health that's where all the other food comes into play that is going to boost my health this one's more so for my emotional health or maybe it's a social thing right so again we all live very different lives i'm not trying to program you or tell you how to live your life i just want to encourage you to really opt for wholesome foods figure out what foods work for your body and your mind and what foods do not and leave out the foods that do not work for you because those will be causing inflammation which will negatively impact your gut health your liver health your overall detoxification and elimination and therefore also impact negatively your blood sugar your insulin your hormones your menstrual cycles ovulation etc so especially when i'm working with someone who is struggling with any unfavorable symptoms all throughout their cycle we really really want to place a big emphasis on nutrition um, but once your body is back in balance and homeostasis then you totally may be one of those people that can go to Europe, right? And eat the gluten, um, or you can tolerate dairy, or you can tolerate things that maybe you couldn't have when your body was in a very fragile state. So that's important to remember too, is that not only are we different as individuals, but we also change 
throughout our lives, throughout the days, the weeks, the months, and the years. So it's important to remember that like just because something worked for you in the past doesn't mean that it necessarily will work for you now. And at the same time, something that doesn't work for you now that your body can't tolerate, maybe you will be able to in the future once we get your body back in balance. So we could talk about, you know, how I love cruciferous vegetables and broccoli sprouts and wild caught fish and omega-3 fatty acids and flax seeds and chia seeds and leaving out seed oils we could talk about all that but i also don't want to sound like a broken record because i do talk about this all the time and i think that we all are pretty intuitive and knowledgeable at this point about the foods that do and don't agree with the human body in general but especially for our own body so next i would want to get into inflammation reducing herbs so i love turmeric and it is an anti-inflammatory herb it has curcumin which is one of the many active compounds in it that helps to reduce inflammation i also love ginger which is why ginger is in two of my three formulas i love boswellia ceylon cinnamon which is also really great for blood sugar regulation and rosemary and these are just a few of the many many herbs that one can drink in tea form take in tincture form capsule form add to food etc that will support in reducing inflammation again there are so many if you want to go look into some other ones whether they're culinary herbs and spices or you're taking them in a more supplement mental form i highly recommend to go do some more digging into that i kind of just wanted to give a few of the very very common popular ones that i also love so those were those next would be limiting alcohol consumption don't be mad at the messenger <laughs> alcohol is not a health food i i don't drink i'm not sober um but i i just don't drink alcohol i don't feel well i have a double mthfr genetic mutation so for me alcohol really really does not work with my body it doesn't really work with anyone's body but especially not mine and we just know that alcohol causes stress on the liver and on the gut and increases inflammation it wonks blood sugar out of balance which also negatively impacts insulin sensitivity especially when we're talking about this in the long term so um, having a, a glass of wine organic wine once in a blue moon impacts the body and the mind very differently than drinking multiple times a week or even worse every single day so i give a loving reminder to do a little tune-in check-in about how your alcohol habits are and how those may be contributing to any negative symptoms. And let me just tell you, as someone who does not drink, but someone who is still very social and loves to go out and be social with friends, I don't really go to bars because that's not really my vibe, but I love to go see live music. I love to go to like house parties of a friend that I know or dinner parties or just sometimes I just want to go out and dance because I'm a dancer and I love it and it's so amazing to move your body and move your hips. But I don't drink alcohol and I still have so much fun, arguably more fun than the days that I did drink alcohol. So just some food for thought there and also i feel like i have surrounded myself unconsciously honestly with a bunch of people who also don't drink alcohol so we have fun together <laughs> next is regular exercise contributes to overall health it supports your liver it helps to reduce inflammation it does all these wonderful things so my little uh, recommendation tidbit on exercise is to cycle sync your workouts to further support your overall health and well-being and your hormone health and your cycle health Next would be getting adequate sleep, prioritizing, not just getting enough sleep, but quality sleep. So making sure that you're getting enough REM sleep and deep sleep. Those are two separate things every single night, making sure that you're getting into bed early and around the same time every single night our body and our circadian rhythm thrives off routine so if you could get into bed around 30 so or so minutes with of the same time every single night that's preferable the earlier you can get into bed before midnight the better then you'll start kickstart these physiological processes that happen when we sleep such as cellular repair and rejuvenation liver health and detoxification um, our cognitive neural health everything starts to rest and heal when we are in that deep parasympathetic state when we sleep so i cannot recommend enough to start prioritizing sleep it's free to do so and you can start doing it asap which is amazing you don't have to wait for anything to come in the mail you can just start it right away right away tonight 
I did suffer from insomnia for most of my life, so I know that it's not always just easy to just get to bed early and sleep well. So I do have an entire podcast episode and plenty of resources for you all on creating a nighttime routine to be supportive of sleep, things that you can do throughout the day to support sleep, and herbals and supplements that you can take to also help calm your mind, calm your nervous system, and to sleep super deeply. Next would be manage stress, which kind of goes hand in hand. I used to say work on stress reduction. I don't really say that anymore. Instead, I just say manage stress. So stress management because sometimes we can't control the things that we are obligations in life, right? And sometimes they can be stressful. Earlier in this episode, I was talking about how the holiday stress, such as like traveling, right? Like it can be a positive stress, but still stress in the body. So managing stress isn't about like trying to remove things from our life. It's more so changing our perspective and our outlook on the things and people and situations in our life. And also taking care of ourselves to help build up our stress resiliency through meditation, through breath, through exercise, Exercise, through nutrition, through herbal supplementation, because herbs support the body and they help to optimize the systems and the organs and the immunity of the body. So all of these things that we can do to help us manage our stress. And then I want to talk about supporting your gut health, which everything that we've already talked about does support your gut health, but I also want to place an emphasis on staying regular with bowel movements and having anywhere from one to three bowel movements every single day. If you're ever going a day without a bowel movement or going a day without a complete bowel movement, which you'd definitely be able to feel, then I cannot recommend enough to, again, address all of these things that we've been talking about, nutrition, lifestyle, stress, all of these things, and figure out what the root cause of your constipation is, and to really work at it from a natural level. Include some herbs in there that help with bowel health and bowel motility, and to work with a practitioner who you really vibe with to help correct that. Constipation is also on the list of many things that I've dealt with throughout my life, and I do not anymore and it's very important to stay regular you just feel so much worse even from one day of being constipated so I've seen people who haven't had a real bowel movement in like four weeks and also that was me back in high school I literally was hospitalized for it so I'm very sympathetic to it I know that it happens and it exists for people and I'm here to support you in any way that I can maybe we'll have to do a whole podcast episode actually on like constipation and bowel health And then last but certainly not least and also certainly not a requirement, saunas. So I recommend sweating in general four to five times a week. I love saunas of all sorts because it really helps your body to sweat a lot more so than just like a little like boob sweat and you know some like armpit sweat from a workout. It really helps to really purge anything that has been moving and processed and metabolized by the liver and your lymphatics it really just it it supports your entire system is what i'm trying to say so if you could get in a sauna that would be amazing if you could get in an infrared sauna even more amazing and i know that infrared saunas are quite an investment so my recommendation would be to go find a wellness studio or a gym near you that has an infrared sauna um another option is to invest in a like a sauna blanket or an individual one person sauna because those are much much cheaper than the other options and i have my own personal recommendations and favorites that i use linked up on my website i have uh, an entire page dedicated to maddie's favorites and it's a list of things that i love and i use whether it's daily weekly monthly like i actually use these products and i love them so i get asked all the time like where's my rebounder from where is my lymphatic vibration plate from which by the way it's not called a lymphatic vibration plate it's a vibration plate i just call it a lymphatic vibration plate because it helps to stimulate those lymphs (laughs) Um, i have links to like the pots and pans that we use, red infrared lights that we use because we have those around our house. I have links for like everything. And if I'm missing anything, just send me a message on Instagram and I'll add it to the website. Um, Like if you see me using something a lot that you don't see a link for on the resource page, let me know and I'll add it. Alrighty, everyone. I think that's all I have to say today. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to yet another podcast episode and YouTube video for the Peace Love Hormones channel. What we talked about today is number one, the importance of ovulation 
and the importance of our cycles as a whole. We talked about ovulation pain, also known as middle schmerz. We talked about ovulation spotting. We talked about how sometimes this has no correlation to ovulation and there are actually underlying root causes outside of ovulation, such as hormonal imbalances. Also, this could be happening later or earlier in your cycle, not around ovulation. So we talked about the importance of actually tracking your cycle. And I will link up all of my resources in terms of everything that I've mentioned pretty much, like the blog post on my favorites, the podcast episode on sleeping your best ever, podcast episode on why ovulation is important, podcast episode on the symptothermal method so you can track your cycle. I'll link all of these up in the show notes of this episode, so please go check those out. All of the links will be there. And in conclusion, my final thoughts are just that we are so beautiful and powerful and whatever we are struggling with, there is a way to correct it. So the modalities that I already talked about in this podcast episode to help regulate your hormones, regulate your cycles, to prevent and to correct these symptoms and issues from happening are all very powerful. Most of them are incredibly easy to start ASAP. And I am always here as your guide as well, your very humble and grateful guide. We will have so many more podcast episodes and YouTube videos in the future on all things women's health and how I like to address various women's health issues naturally using a very holistic approach. If you loved this episode, please do share it with any who you think would benefit from listening or viewing this video slash episode and until next time peace love hormones